Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be building a medieval castle in The Sims 4 with me, Emingard. First things first, medieval castles. Early medieval castles would have been both a residential home of a noble lord and his family as well as being a military outpost. Later in the period these two functions become divorced from each other as we see armies being centralized under the king and you start to see military fortresses and noble residences. So the noble residences in the later period would still maybe look like castles with the crenellations and such because they wanted the boasting rights of being able to say, oh, I have a castle. But the reality is in the later period, as castles of nobility became residences, they stopped being defensible military outposts and they were just palaces. They might look like castles because they would have the crenellations on them and that was a big bragging rights thing for them because having crenellations was sort of what marked something as being a castle. But they might even put crenellations on their castles that were not even functional. They might serve absolutely no purpose at all, especially if they have giant windows facing the outside. That really was a red flag that this is no longer a military building in any sense. It is just a noble lord's home and he wants it to look like a castle so that he can impress his friends. But early castles were functional. They had the function of defending and keeping out an invading army and all of the things that they put into the architecture of it were really about that. So the crenellations had a true military purpose. They were, were for hiding behind during an attack and shooting between the merlins during an attack it was important that they were functional, that the soldiers had enough room to stand on the battlements, that you had holes to shoot down through at the invading army. Just everything that went into the architecture of these early castles was functional. And I really liked that, so I wanted to go ahead and try and explore that in a Sims build. So here I am finishing up the hoarding, which is that wooden structure on the top of the lower tower. Hoardings were something that they would add to give themselves more space on the battlements. And then here I am making a machiculated wall. So they would put corbels into the wall and then spanning the corbels, they would put larger stones and then build the wall up from there. But that gave them holes through which they could fire down upon the enemy or drop things upon them, such as stones or boiling water or quicklime. Um, they often talk about boiling oil in like fantasy books and stuff, but that would not have been the case so much just because oil was so expensive, they wouldn't have wasted it on just heating it up and dropping it on people. It would be much more effective to just drop stones or boiling water or quicklime on people than it would be to drop hot oil on them. So anyway, the other important part of a castle would be the bailey. So that's the interior part where you have like your garden and your blacksmith and a stable and a lot of other wooden buildings because not every part of a castle would have been made out of stone. Yes, the, the exterior bits would be made out of stone, but the interior bits, you could have wooden structures, you could have thatched roof structures, and this would be maybe where your servants would live, where you would quarter your horses, where you would have the blacksmith or a number of other buildings that you would really need to have a functioning castle. Now what I'm doing here is I'm putting in the retaining walls around the barbican and then I will, the barbican is the narrowing bit of passage that leads up to the gatehouse and it's essentially just a way to funnel the attacking army into an optimal strike zone. But I'll, I'll get to that in a second right now, I'm just wallpapering the interior of buildings and as you can see I'm making them partially timber because not every building in a castle would have been stone because stone was so incredibly expensive. So they would have wooden structures inside of the bailey. Um, but yeah, here I'm working on the barbican and I'm also going to add a moat on either side of the barbican. The moat ends up serving a couple of purposes. So it helps with funneling the invading troops into the optimal strike zone and further helps with castle defense, but it also provides a um, very disgusting but needed waste management solution for medieval lords and that is to be acting as an open cesspit for their waste. They would build similarly to how you construct matriculations 
with the holes going down, you would make a garter robe. So here I'm making a garter robe, similar fashion to the meticulated wall over the gatehouse, so that you would just have a tiny room sort of built out and there would be a hole in it and the waste would just drop down the outside of the castle, just straight down into the moat. So moats were incredibly disgusting. And if you don't know anything about maintaining a pond, ponds naturally fill themselves in each year. They, bunch of gra a, a bunch of um, vegetation, pond vegetation will grow and then it will die and it will rot and it will kind of become the muddy bottom surface of the pond and then more stuff will grow. And so over time, your pond will just fill itself in by growing all of these plants. And so ponds and also moats would have had to be dredged. And just thinking about that is so disgusting to me because these are like, you're dredging a cesspit. Like this is not just a pond. This is where all of the waste of the castle is going into. And you would still have to dredge it. Otherwise you would just end up with like a sort of muddy ditch, which is less, less good. It's less effective as a defensive barrier. So it's just, oh, it's just so disgusting thinking about they would have to, maybe not every year, but every couple of years, they would have to dredge the moat. And it's just, oh, disgusting. Anyway, I later do end up putting stains underneath the garter robes from Strangerville. They have a stain, I don't know, wall decoration that looks like water dripping. So I put that on the outside underneath the garter robes just to further emphasize how disgusting this is that there's waste is just going straight down the side of the castle wall into the moat. Um, yeah, I wanted it to be authentic for you. Anyway, here I'm making the murder hole. So the murder hole would have been the passageway between the outer gate and the inner bailey going underneath of the gatehouse and above it there would be, so there'd be a hole in the ceiling and a hole in the floor above it where you could throw things down onto people who were invading. So if the, if the gate was breached and the invading force comes rushing in, you can still attack them from the gatehouse. Um, and then I'm moving on to the chapel. It was really important to have a chapel in medieval times. I mean, not every noble lord would have had a, a chapel, but it was kind of a good idea to have a castle chapel and a castle chaplain because they served some very important um, community outreach purposes they helped with relations with the town that the Lord would be ruling over. They would help with negotiations with other noble lords. And it was just incredible bragging rights for other lords. Like, oh, I have a chaplain. We have a castle chaplain. It was a big deal. Also, a castle chaplain would have educated the children of the castle. Not, I mean, the common children, but it, he would have educated the lordlings of the castle in both French and Latin. So having a castle chaplain was just incredibly, incredibly beneficial. And if you could afford to have one, it was great to have one because they served so many different functions politically. Um, and then also just practically, it was what, who else is going to educate your children? So it was a great thing to have and lots of castles had them. Also, it meant that you could have a castle crypt because the space under the chapel would have been consecrated so you could have a family crypt below the chapel, which I will be doing in a little bit here. Um, I'm also here just sort of cluttering things up and looking for different items to put in different places. Some of these rooms did get rearranged as I player tested them just because I can't figure out how to make my sims scooch over. So I. I've heard that it's a thing that you can have double beds against a wall, but I have not been able to make it work. This is the cellar, and you can see I put a keg in there. The reasoning for this is castles often had their own breweries, which were run by the alewife. So the master brewer in castles was most often a woman, and she was called the alewife. And it is sort of a misconception that they always drank ale. They did also drink water. But medieval life was rather boring, so having a brewery, especially if you were a lord and had visiting nobles coming to your house to entertain, it was pretty important to have your own brewery. But they did also just drink water. Like they had, they dug wells and they had fresh, clean water supplies. And if they didn't, they boiled their water. Like, yes, ale and brewing does help purify water and water sources, 
but it also makes you drunk. So they did not go around just being drunk all the time. Anyway, side note. Moving on to the crypt. Um, for this, I kept looking in. So my workaround for being a console player with uh, the debug gallery or uh, catalog, it's not great. The search function for the console is less good than the search function on a PC. And I know this because I watch a lot of other YouTubers and I just cannot find the things that they are finding. So my workaround is to often search the gallery for people's debug dump rooms and then just taking the items from their debug dump rooms and placing them around um, the lot. Unfortunately, there were a lot fewer crypt items than I thought there were, so I ended up just using some items from Jungle Adventure and Vampires to make the crypt. And I also got out the keyboard, which is another thing that's really annoying about being a console player. I have not figured out a way with the controller to just raise and lower items easily. So, and I mostly use the controller at this point because when I first started playing, there was no compatibility with keyboards. So I just had to learn how to do it on the on the controller and I got to a point where I'm much more comfortable using the controller than I am using a keyboard to play sims at this point. So usually once the build I will get out the keyboard just so I can raise and lower some items such as the caskets here and the roses on the casket and the random things that I was jumping around the castle to raise up like the bread and the bottle on the table just like random things that you need to because they don't snap. Not all the debug items snap to a table or to a countertop. So you have to go through and raise them up to the level they're supposed to be if you want them to be sitting on something. So here I'm just messing with, <coughs> excuse me, messing with the different layout of the crypt and where the caskets should be and placing stones underneath of the larger caskets on either side. The story I was telling was basically that uh, the older lord and lady had passed on and that maybe the um, the current lord's son as well, maybe his he lost a child and I don't know, the spring fever. Because infant mortality and child mortality was just really high in this period because they didn't have good hygiene and they didn't have good medicine and a lot of their medical solutions to things were horrible, like bleeding people. Like it makes absolutely no sense. But that's that was what life was like. It was rather horrible. So here I was trying to make it look like, yeah, maybe it was a more recent death, quite tragic. They still have fresh flowers. Like maybe the, the current lady is still quite broken up about it and goes down and puts flowers in. But yeah, that is the, that is our castle. She has a small one just for a lesser lord. You can see the stains on the outside. Oh, so gross. Um, and it is painted white because that would be historically, ac historically accurate. That's the master, the lord's bedroom, the chapel. There's the kitchens looking kind of rather awful. The Great Hall, which is, I mean, he's a lesser lord, doesn't have much. The crypts again, quite gloomy. And the machiculations at night, so you can see up through them at uh, T-Moon, which is quite nice. Hope you've enjoyed this, and if you want to see more, please hit the subscribe and like button. Thank you very much, have a great day.